This is the first time I'm going outside Red Ardondo. It's not like we're going on a picnic, Beat. Don't get so excited. Yeah, I know that, Red Oak. We're going to help Red Ardondo's poor by getting the leaders to lower taxes on stuff besides the mineral powder, right? That way, everyone can afford blankets and cheese and all the honey-covered bread they could ever possibly want. Especially cheese. Especially cheese. And everyone cheese. can finally be happy. Right, Reto? That's exactly right. Hey, I'm proud of you, B. We can't solve things by just stealing bread. We have to uncover the real root of the problem. Yeah, you said it. <laughs> so, uh, where are we going anyway? People aren't gonna be happy, though. You mean you don't know? Jeez, I take back what I just said. We're heading to Forte Castle to talk to the guys in charge. Come on, let's go. Hey, Reto, wait up! All right, I got an actual achievement. Before we leave, you should probably see how the kids in the sewer are doing. Okay. Maybe we should see if we can get some, uh... Stuff from the pharmacy. He won't buy the powder. How are we supposed to stay alive? about weapons? Can we get weapons at the item shop? Um. I can't quite tell if it helps you or not. <laughs> See if I can sell a photo. Wow, that much gold? That's what I'm talking about. Hey, can I have that? Can I? Thanks. Here, I'll give you this in exchange. Acquired stick. Thank you. Oh, you're going outside of the city? Hey, where does the bread you, that you guys always give us come from? It's really good. We steal it, kid from your mama. Man, I'm so bored. I want to go outside. Come on, Reto. Don't look at me like that. I know better than to do that. If we go play up there, somebody will come and take us away somewhere. Yep. Better for you to be a slave. So, uh, we came here to see the kids. Now what? I'm very confused about how that works. Okay, you gotta watch yourself, Beat. It's not gonna be the same as fighting the rats in Retardondo. Some good pictures. Yeah. Pictures? Whatever that thing, a lantern. Come on, don't waste time on that stuff. You need to help me fight. 
Whatever, man. Hey, We're making bank off those pictures. Don't say things like that. Taking pictures isn't a waste of time. Fine, fine. You can tell me all about it later. Come on, let's get moving. Save spot, and we'll uh. Interesting. Our party level has gone up, and we're getting better at real fighting. So now I'm gonna teach you something else that's really important. This is the action gauge. Yeah, I know that already. Come on, just listen. Up until now, your action gauge has only gone down when you're actually doing something, right? But from now on, as soon as you make your first move, your action gauge will just keep going down no matter what. Man, I just read all what? this stuff. What does that mean? What it means is that even when you're standing still, time will keep on passing. If you're not paying attention, your turn will be over before you know it, and it'll be your enemy's turn. What? That's no fair. Fighting like that's gonna be really, really hard. Yep, that's right. And that's where tactical time comes in. Tactical time? What's that? Tactical time is the time you get at the beginning of your turn to figure out what it is you're gonna do. As long as you don't move or attack, you can stay in tactical time for as long as you want. Okay, so then what you're saying is the tactical time you get is unlimited, and that would mean... Oh, I get it. So when it's your turn, all you have to do is stay standing still. And then you have lots of time to think about what you're gonna do when you start fighting. Exactly. One more thing. From now on, the more echoes you build up, the more power your special attacks will have when they hit an enemy. Echoes? An echo is what you get when your hit count reaches a certain number. And they just keep accumulating, right over here. I get it. In that case, we should just use our special attacks all the time. That way, we'll be building up lots and lots of echoes, and our special attacks will just keep getting stronger and stronger because we'll have so many echoes. It's perfect. We'll be killing two birds with one stone. I am so smart. Not so fast. Unfortunately, when you use your special attacks, all the echoes you've accumulated get used up. Basically, the power of your special attack increases, but you lose all of your echoes because of it. So, if you want to try and build up a lot of echoes, you can't do it by using your special attacks. Oh, but how can you ever get enough echoes to use them with your special attacks? It must be really hard for one person to build up so many all by himself. That's right, and that's why we have to work together to build them up. Echoes don't just belong to you, they belong to everyone who's fighting. But then that means that you could use up all the echoes that I had worked so hard to build up. That doesn't sound very fair, you know. Come on, don't say things like that. I'm counting on you, partner. Veet, look over there at that enemy. What about it? How did that happen? It just turned into a completely different monster. There are some monsters that can transform, depending on whether they're in sunlight or in shadow. Some will get really strong, and some will even change the kinds of attacks they use, so you gotta be really careful. Have a nice nap. Good job, good job. All right, now that tutorial's done. All I really want to do now is find a um, save point and save. Let's 
go! Sky Divider! Sky Divider! What did you expect? So far, the um, left side has been all whatever. What's who's this guy? My inner voice cries out for me to capture the paint and paint the full essence of this great landscape. But the lush bounty of nature is more lush than I've imagined. I've almost used up all my green paint. It is pretty green. You need Photoshop, my friend. The animals aren't bothering you. All right, there's the safe spot. So, how about we go around? Thank <laughs> you. 
If we don't hurry, we're gonna get caught in the rain. So what? We can handle a little rain. I mean, the hideout's roof leaks like crazy. <laughs> and that's just when it drizzles. Yeah, you got a point there. Hey everybody, it's Yusef with a better mic. I'm speaking uh, further in the future. I'm going back to edit this thing because, you know, I kind of liked the game, even though a lot of people felt like it was a little boring. But anyway, I wanted to come back on and read this story. Uh, George Sand. It is impossible to tell the story of Chopin's life without the mention of this woman. <clears throat> George Sand was an ex extremely famous author in Paris who had already published numerous books. They make you wait a little bit. <laughs> her real name was Aurora Dudevant. George Sand was her pseudonym. Her nom de plume. From 1838, Chopin would share his life with her for a long period of time. When they first met, he commented to a friend, Is that really a woman?
San was somewhat uh, was a somewhat masculine woman who wore pants and smoked cigars in public. Even her pseudonym, George San, was masculine. I think you really had to point that out. She was unswayed by society's mores and expressed herself unabashedly. The romance novels she wrote were extremely, extremely popular, as shown by this stock photo. Of course, Chopin himself was also uh, famous as a pianist in Paris by this time. The relationship between the genius pianist and the popular author must surely have been the talk of the town. Yeah, I don't know. Was Chopin a little, uh, little girly or something? At the time, Chopin was not in the best health, and perhaps the attention paid to them by society aggravated his condition. And TMZ was rolling up on Chopin. He's like over there coughing like, uh, I'm not feeling so good. During this time, Sam took Chopin to the Spanish island of Mallorca to allow him to rest. Mallorca, that's where uh, Rafael Nadal, the tennis player, is, uh, is from. To avoid attention, they left Paris separately and rendezvous, is that even a, name, a word, at the villager, at, the, at a village near the border. Rendezvous? Rendezvous. <laughs> they found a place to live on Mallorca, and Chopin lived a happy life amongst the palm trees. That's not a palm tree. Orange trees and pomegranates. Maybe, maybe those. That's a, a pomegranate tree, or maybe in Mallorca they got some really ill orange trees. Chopin's health appeared to be improving, but the island entered its rainy se season, and the warm weather vanished. Chopin caught a cold that eventually led to a relapse of tuberculosis symptoms. That sucks. And back then, tuberculosis, wasn't that what they called the uh, Black Death? Or was that just the flu? At the time, tuberculosis was a terminal illness, and Chopin and Sands' landlord evicted them, fearing contagion. Damn, George Sand hung, hung out with Chopin the whole time and didn't get tuberculosis? After being forced from their home in 1839, Chopin and Sand arrived in the Valle de Mosa Monastery. Valle de Mosa, Valle de Mosa? And rain continued to fall outside. Where you try to live at a beach resort, man. You get that rain, son. God, these stock photos. The sound of falling rain continued incessantly. The simple sound of raindrops blended together to form a dreary rhythm. Dreary rhythm. Yeah, that stock photo. It's like looking at an old man with bad teeth. <laughs> that, that piano. It was under these circumstances that this song is said to have been born in a room in Valdemosa. Fair enough. Since it was such a long time ago, it is copyright free, ladies and gentlemen. A work created by Chopin at age 29. The journey to find rest ironically resulted in the worsening of Chopin's health. You see, if it was somebody who was more recent, you know, like within the last hundred years, they would have gotcha. Anyway, but George Sand devotedly stayed by Chopin's side, never fearing infection. She put that, she put, she put, oh, that's that uh, place over there in um, Assassin's Creed. There is little doubt that she was an invaluable source of comfort for Chopin. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it makes sense. A little butch woman walking up there, carrying a sick dude all over the place. Oh, that was it. Sweet. 
looks like it's finally started raining. You know, the rain makes the plants look even more alive. For Chinudo's flowers, the rain is a blessing from heaven. What? They like to talk about heaven a lot around this thing. Anyway, I'm sure that's it. So I'll see you guys on the next Dad's Free Time Let's Plays. Peace.